before Thanksgiving, we have to celebrate Halloween. It's almost here, and what display is complete without a jack-o'-lantern or two? Yeah, Kevin Raddis joins us live from Appleton with a look at some amazing pumpkin art. Kevin, how you doing this morning? Good morning, guys. I'm doing great. How are you doing? Good. Good. Tell us about this thing you do every year, and uh, I guess you're real busy today, right? <laughs> Right. Well, this is my carving day. We'll probably carve about 30 pumpkins today. And we do this for charity. We're at 1225 East Harding Drive in Appleton. And we have about 25 to 30 jack-o'-lanterns out. And we encourage everybody to come. There's absolutely nothing scary. It's a very family-friendly display. And what I do is I do all of our pumpkins about the day before that we put them out. So tomorrow will be the very first night that they'll be out. And we'll have them out on Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday. Now, 30 pumpkins is no easy feat. I mean, if you're going to do triangle eyes and your typical jack-o'-lantern face, it would be okay, but yours are a little more intricate. Yeah, we do all the, uh, all of our patterns are usually from Pumpkin Masters. That's the main company. There's a lot of internet sites that sell them as well. And we try to do lots of different designs. This year it's a little more fun for me because with my 19-month-old daughter, Brenna, I get to do Mickey Mouse, Elmo. We're incorporating some for the younger kids as well. So she's very excited for Halloween as well. We have some pictures of uh, previous years too. How many years have you been doing this, Kevin? A very long time. I've probably been carving pumpkins for probably about 20 years, and I would say within the past, oh, maybe past 7 to 10 years, it's gotten pretty pretty big. We figured we had about 2,500 people here last year, wow. and the awesome part was we raised enough money to buy 35 brand new coats for coats for kids. Wow. This year our charity is for the St. Joseph Food Pantry, so everything that gets donated is going right to the St. Joseph Food Pantry. And how do people donate? We have a nice little plastic pumpkin bucket right at the entrance to our display and anybody is more than welcome to just drop a dollar or two in and we just keep collecting it and everything that gets donated gets donated to the St. Joseph Food Pantry this year. And while we have you, you you've carved so many jack-o'-lanterns. What's your best tip for people attempting to carve their own? What have you learned? The, be the best tip is actually when you are gutting your pumpkin, pumpkins have extremely thin thick walls. Like what I'm doing now is I'm actually putting a pattern on one of my pumpkins, but the wall of the pumpkin is very thick. What you need to do, and this is my tool to do it, when you got the pumpkin, you need to thin the walls of your pumpkin. Otherwise, the little tools that come in the kits, the little saws, they're way too small to actually make it through the wall of the pumpkin. So when you're gutting your pumpkin, if you take the time to thin that thick wall, thin it down to about an inch, your little tools are going to go through a whole lot easier, and you're not going to break off a piece you didn't want to break off. Well, great tip. Kevin, thanks for joining us, and of course, we'll check back with you throughout the morning. Great. Thanks, guys. Thanks, yeah. Kevin.